Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. Today is Friday the 16th and this is the weekly wrap up. Take a look at the weekly damage. Corn finished up on the day, but that did little to stop the sliding and damage that we saw this week down 11 and a half. Soybeans was actually positive on the week, up 23, and wheat was up, or actually down 12 and a quarter. Commitment of traders report came out today, and as of Tuesday, we actually saw some uh, corn. The net long position was cut a little bit. That is supportive of the price action that we saw. Beans, their net short position uh, was actually reduced, uh, once again, supportive of price action. And wheat, uh, their overall net short position was added to, bringing it to the second largest on records. If you look at beans, beans really stood out here. Let's just take a look at the weekly price activity. It really printed a big double bottom here, dipped below the $11 support, and then it rocketed higher on Friday. Brock, what is so different about beans? Uh, it's been so weak for so long, and all of a sudden, it's the one that stood out uh, with strength this week. What's going on? Yeah, I think a lot of uh, traders are starting to turn their attention down to the South American crop. Right now, we've seen a dry weather pattern set in for our, our growers down in Argentina. Uh, take a look at our vegetation index map provided by our friends at Planalytics, which shows the relative moisture levels of the crops being grown in South America. As you can see, the red and orange area shows that there is quite a bit of stress over much of the growing region for Argentina. This is due to a relative lack of precipitation uh, for basically the whole month of December where we're only running about 0 to 30 percent of normal on our pre precipitation levels there. Uh, the crop is starting to show some stress and there's not a whole lot of relief in sight, Cody. Looks like uh, the weather next week is going to be about in the 80s and 90s with little precipitation in the forecast. Uh, why is this important? We're looking at a we're coming up on the all-important pollination period. So this is going to be something we're going to have to keep our eyes on going forward. I guess what a lot of producers are wondering uh, out there is uh, can this, this uh, dryness in South America continue to support beans and continue to put gains on the board here next week? Well, fundamentally, this has supported us this week. We were up you know, about 23 cents or so. But technically, we're running into resistance right now uh, on the overhead on the daily chart uh, for soybeans. Okay, so there's a good chance that uh, you know if we continue to see dryness, if we don't get the precipitation that we kind of expect in the next week, uh, there's a good chance that this thing really could rocket higher. That yeah, support the other the other grains as well. We certainly could push a little bit higher out of that resistance area. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we're back, we're going to talk about the Informer acreage numbers. We're going to talk a little bit about the dollar and whether or not anything this week is a game changer for producers. I'll have to be honest with you. First thing I'm going to mention right up front is, is it's free. Uh, I, I like this, this, this service when, when it's free because, you know, you can tie up a lot of money in, in different services. And from experience, I found out that sometimes you can pay a lot of money and you may not be getting that much out of it. Welcome back to Grain TV for the weekly wrap up. Well, Cody, like we were mentioning earlier, beans have gotten some support from South American uh, dry weather. Uh, but I'm looking at this and I think maybe the indications for an acreage battle is starting to form. What are your thoughts on that? I would disagree. I think it's too early for an acreage battle, but the Informa acreage numbers did come out. Corn, we actually saw an increase in the acreage there, 0.3 million, uh, million acres. And for beans, we saw a decline in acreage there, 1.5 million acres almost. So bottom line, this would support beans. This would not so much support corn. I still think it's way too early to be talking about the acreage battle. We got a lot of time before producers need to make those decisions. I was talking with an elevator the other day. They were looking to try and sell fertilizer. They had some fertilizer on hand, but it, they're having a difficult time moving it into the producers' uh, into the producers' hands. Mostly because producers don't necessarily want to be locking in uh, their input costs on a crop that they don't really know what the value is. Uh, you know, I just think we have a long a long ways to go before we really start getting this acreage battle. But if we see if we see the damage uh, of this this drought and this dryness down in South America, there's a good chance that you'll start seeing bidding in, uh, in these beans and that could start making them more competitive uh, relative to corn. Yeah, as it stands right now, corn is very much so in, in the, the driver's seat as far as the acreage battle is concerned. The profitability levels are definitely in favor of corn right now as compared to beans. So we would have to see beans gain on corn 
to see them steal some acres away going forward. Yeah, I would agree. Well, we're just going to take a quick look at the dollar. I know we focus on this all the time, but you know what has the dollar been doing? It broke out. Now it's coming back. It's touching on support level. I think that the trend will most likely continue. That'll continue to put pressure on grains. Brock, you know, considering all the stuff that we've talked about today, uh, do you think that the, this uh, game changer at all for producers out there, should they be changing the strategy that we've kind of been supporting this whole time? You know, I don't think a whole lot fundamentally or technically has really changed for producers. Uh, the strategy that we have been saying is sell in the cash market or take advantage of basis levels with a basis contract, re-own on paper if you think there's upside. You know, I think that is still intact, and I'm also suggesting that you know, sell in the cash market on these rallies. If you need to make some catch-up sales, do them now. We did get a nice 23 cent pop in soybeans this week, so I'm looking for that. You know, some, for some sales to be made in the cash market. Yeah, there's a good chance that that even the uh, the strength in the basis market coming after the new year, there's a good chance that we see some farmers making some cash sales, m maybe on tax purposes. Um, you know, but but seeing a little bit uh, looser grain flow, and that could start to take some of that strong basis out of the market. So I'd say capture it now. I would agree with you. Uh, capture that basis now. Make some cash sales, uh, and then if you think that there's some legs under this market. Go ahead and reown it on paper. So, speaking of capturing a good opportunity, we still have our uh, holiday special out there: ten free trades if you open an account by December 31st. To find out more, follow us on Twitter, check us out on Facebook, get a hold of us at 877 grain 07, or as always, take a free demo at grainhedge.com. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good weekend.